Artificial intelligence, like Manavendra said, is the buzzword. Everybody is talking about it, from venture capitalists to industrialists, to professors, to researchers, even politicians. My own son is charting out his career playbook and he's barely a teenager. I happen to have the privilege of working with some amazing smart people in my research lab that is focused on artificial intelligence, and we do some exciting work. No, I don't mean robots are coming for us. Not that kind of exciting. In fact, I think that conversation is as a result of what is Amara's law. All of us as humans, when we see something transformational happening, we tend to overestimate the impact in the short term and, then, and end up missing the longer term, bigger picture. Question is, why does it happen? And the answer really lies in the fact that transformational technologies tend to be exponential, very deceptive in slope, and then they suddenly surprise us. Why do they surprise us? They surprise us because most of us would say, next 25 years are going to look like something like previous 25 years with some changes. That's generally the mental model most average humans have. But reality often tends to be very diff different and we end up missing the signs of the takeoff. The question is what, what enables such exponentials to take off? I'm sure maybe you are saying, what is this guy talking about? Ask the guy who about 100,000 years ago came up with fire. He didn't know what he's doing, how transformational it's going to be. And if you want to talk about deceptive slope, for almost 100,000 years, and a cadence of about 10,000 years, we barely moved the needle. The world never really changed. Of course, I'm trying to dial a contrast here. 10,000 years is a long time. But then something interesting happens. Something, we start seeing a slope. Of course, over several lifetimes, and you know, most people wouldn't notice something is really happening. But in the human history, we invented new technologies. Call them cities, call them agriculture. And then voila, in 3,000 years, the world looked very different. Of course, to an average human being, it still mean, meant several, several, several lifetimes, but looked different. What about last 4,000 years? We know last 200 years have been transformational. We also know that in the first 15 years of this century, we have made the progress that we didn't make in 200 years. We all know industrial revolution, we all know electricity, we know how transformational they have been, we know internet. Now the question is, what's AI going to do for us? Is it going to take us over? Or is it going to be transformational in some other way? But before we answer that question, think internet, think cities, th keep that in mind. I want to answer the question, what makes these exponentials take off? What are these signs that we should look or look for? And that really boils down to, in my mind, these five things. Any such technology, something like an internet, something like a city, is open, accessible, it's scalable. It's not controlled by one entity, it's not shaped by one entity. It's equal opportunity to create value. For example, with internet, anybody sitting in the rural uh, area of a third world country has as much opportunity to create value on internet as somebody sitting in the first world. Ecosystems evolve or even disappear, but they connect and create more value. And by nature, therefore, participation becomes an incentive. Everybody wants to be there. And we have to look for these signs. Let's look at what's, what AI is doing. Something unprecedented is happening. When somebody today talks about AI, we see these two words. Is somebody, robots going to come and you know, kick our proverbial here? Or are they going to partner? And I think the, I, what in my mind is really going to happen is something like this. The world is going to look different. I'm going to give you a clue. There were people who were earning their living thinking about horses are the it. But we all know what world we want to live in. Yes, there was pain and transformation, but we know we are better off in the world that we are in today than then. And how many industries have gotten shaped up because we took this path? What's happening with AI? Imagine when a person sitting in village today says, Google, play this song for me. It's not the phone that's doing the magic. Of course, phone is doing the magic. But unprecedented in the history of human history, 
there's massive amount of supercomputing power sitting in data centers of Google or Amazon, crunching data and serving that request. It's unprecedented access of such resources to a common man. That's the transformation that's happening today. We don't see it because it's like power infrastructure. We see the bulb, we don't see the transmission lines, we don't see the generators. That's what's happening at the back of all of this. What will happen because something like this is possible? What will happen is we needed an Einstein to come every 100 years or every 200 years to come up with an equation and you know, take another 100 years to say the theory is right. That world is going to change. We're going to go from a world of inside out to an outside in where complex systems we can understand far quickly, far better. The pace will accelerate. And what does that pace do? The hardest problems facing the humanity become tractable by AI. What do I mean by that? Let me walk through a couple of examples. We know environment is a big deal. And again, I have the privilege of working on some of these things with my colleagues around the world. Ocean health depends, an indicator of an ocean health is whale health. Earlier, it was an intrusive process. You've got to go and you know, somehow catch hold of the whale and find out its health. Now, with AI, you can go drones, figure out the health of the whale, from its tail, actually, as it turns out, and predict what's going on. And now, instead of tens of vessels, thousands of vessels. I talked about ocean health. You could apply it to any environment situation. Let's come closer to India. Look at the hard problem, an embarrassing figure. 17 deaths per hour on the road. And I'm not going to talk autonomous cars. That's not what I'm talking about, but a hard problem. How do we solve it? By technology. Some pilot, for example, in Bangalore, along with the government, we've been mapping what are the hot spots. You know, government vehicles are running through the day, mass transport, buses and all. We have technology deployed there, where we are studying throughout the day. Of course, I'm going to give you just a snapshot of where are the most possibilities of accident, near misses, uh, collision with a, a cyclist or a you know, motorcycle or a pedestrian. This is what it tells us during non-peak hours. And then this is what it tells us during peak hours. Now, this is a complex system. Traffic is a complex system, especially in India. We know that. Now we have insight into what's going on. We can intervene both offline through physical in infrastructure or through technology now. How? One, we have the data. Second, we put together a data set from India. Fondly, inside of our workplace, we called it Wild Wild East. We needed something Wild Wild here as well. So we call it Wild Wild East. And state-of-the-art algorithms in the world struggled with it to understand what's going on in traffic in India. But interesting thing with AI is the fact that you give it data, data plus AI leads to safer roads, better driver-assist technologies, which don't exist today in India, but could be brought in. Another hard problem. Healthcare in India, one patient, one is to 1,500 doctor-patient ratio. We're never going to solve this problem through physical infrastructure. Half of the world's impoverished population annually happens because of health reasons. How do we solve it? We know this is happening. We know these headlines. I don't need to talk about these headlines. We are seeing that uh, AI or machine learning is having an impact. But we also know this is going to be true. As we do more genomics, as we do more genome regulatory networks, as we tie patient outcomes, treatment outcomes, as we know more about disease pathways, algorithms will start driving care. It's going to become so complicated that we would need algorithms to drive care. Here's the possibility thinking. India has a 104 health line where you get non-emergency medical advice. In five years from now, given that natural language recognition is there, could we look at the possibility of AI-powered national-scale helpline so that we can actually scale with technology and save rural India? For India to leapfrog, I believe these five things will be important that I covered earlier about open platform, decentralized, privacy being very, very important, connect to best talent in the world and compete for best talent in the world, let it be inclusive, Everybody should have, be able to participate. First 30 years of India were roti kapda makan, food, clothing, shelter. Other 30 years post-independent were about 
बिजली सड़क पानी नेक्स्ट फ्यू डेकेड्स हैव टू बी अबाउट डेटा कंप्यूट एंड कनेक्टिविटी दैट्स वेन वी पुट ए आई ऑन स्टेरॉइड एंड इन्वेंट द फ्यूचर टूगेदर थैंक यू